Well, as all Africans, or any African, it's first of all to show my solidarity with Rwandan people. And in that sense, we all, Rwandese, everybody who knows about genocide is a Rwandese. If, Secondly, uh, to me, while well, this is a commemoration, I know so much Rwanda because I worked in Rwanda for num num a few months in 2010, but it's not only commemoration for those who have lost and for what it, genocide means, but also this is, uh, to me, a way of uh, showing my, my faith in Rwanda and the Rwandese people because I've seen firsthand what they have done to revive their country, to believe in the future, and to make sure that uh, this never happens again. Not only in Rwanda, but everywhere in Africa and in the world for that matter. So it, it means that commemoration to be with Rwandan people today, but also showing my faith in, in Rwanda's future. From an event like this, I you know, get to hear stories of people that were there and just gain the wisdom of people that were older at the time and remember it better and you know I was eight years old when it started and I was in the US so I don't know much about it and I you know don't have a good background or any actually actual stories about it so you can read all you want you can watch documentaries and movies about it but to actually hear people's stories is what really you know hits you deep in your soul and like makes you feel the stories are real and um, makes it important. Well the opportunity is rare to be able to come together with your community, to be able to remember, to be able to pay homage to those who just suffered unspeakable um, losses and um, to me I think the most meaningful part of it is the collective experience you know there's nothing like being able to at least collectively mourn, collectively remember, and collectively be able to just, you know, uh, you know, continue to share the themes of um, never being, able, never forgetting the losses. Well, I hope it means a lot to me because I'm a survivor, and it helps me not forget the image of and understand more exactly for what happened. So, and it's constructive as well as we remember in the event. It takes me back to 1994. It's, uh, I was in Rwanda at the time, so it means a lot to me to be part of it. To keep the, to keep the, the memory alive for those who perished in genocide, and to keep telling their stories since they are no longer with us, it's our obligation to keep telling their stories and to keep their memory alive. My wife Jane and I have become very close to Rwanda. Um, we help support four Rwandan students at William Penn University and, and we view those four young people as parts of our family. And so I guess uh, just by virtue of having four Rwandan children, uh, we feel that there's a small part of us that's Rwandese. And so we like to come and support uh, the Rwandan community whenever we can. Uh, for me personally, as a survivor, it's uh, important to just be in the room with people to feel the support, to feel the love, because uh, it's, uh, it's a statement that we might have been forgotten 19 years ago, but now the international community is coming together to work with us as we cope with the traumas that we inherited from the genocide. But also uh, as uh, a coordinator of the organizing uh, uh, committee, it is important that we bring as many Rwandans and friends of Rwanda together to not just remember, but educate. We have the youth that is not aware of what happened 19 years ago. So we're carrying forward the memories of our people as we educate, obviously, to make sure that the future of Rwanda would be no one's future going forward. As a Rwandan, it's very important for me to be with everybody else to reflect on what happened to our country, to remember those who left us, but also to be part of the determination and the resilience of all Rwandans to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So to me, it's the minimum we can do for our dear loved ones to be, to be able to remember. I mean, we do remember every day, 
but today like this one is very important and to celebrate the lives of those who are lost and to remember the survivors because I think the heroes of this whole thing is the survivors and we very often forget about them. When we hear their stories, it's always good to remember. This is a way to keep uh, the memory of the genocide alive. Also, it shows a commitment uh, to put into perspective the genocide and be able to move on and build a better Rwanda and a better world for tomorrow. I think it's important, uh, first of all, for any diaspora to get together so, so they can continue not only their, their cultural connection to their country, but their political and economic connection to the co country. Uh, secondly, I think it's very important for uh, the Rwandan diaspora to remind the rest of the United States, the rest of the world, about the terrible tragedy that happened in 1994 and hopefully help prevent that from happening again. We, as human beings, it's so easy to just go back to our lives and forget. Sometimes people might think that it was 19 years ago without realizing that the consequences that, of what we went through 19 years ago are still increasing, are still uh, have really transformed our lives and well for the rest of our lives. So we still need to continue to support uh, Rwanda as a country, survivors, as we work together to rebuild our lives. So a part of commemoration is to make sure that we preserve history, but first and foremost, we learn what it is that we can do, not only to make sure that we move forward as a country, but also to make sure that the future is peaceful for all, not just for Rwandans, but a free, a world of free uh, of any genocide. Otherwise, people will forget about it, and the meaning of the genocide will be lost. And that's a very important event, not only for Rwanda, but for the whole world. It's very important. I mean, even when you lose somebody through any other means, you, com you commemorate their life, you remember them. But I think for a country, and even internationally, this is even very important because it not only honors them, but it also is a moment to reflect and to make sure that people think about the causes of genocide, think of, people think about the impact of genocide. All these testimonies are very important, testimonies of the survivors, testimonies of people who saw it from the other lenses. I think today's event was very important to hear, especially the non-Rwandans, talk about it. And to I think the, the one important question my, uh, one important takeaway from today was who is speaking for the survivors? And I think that's something we really need to think about every time. And once we, if we didn't have these uh, events of commemoration, the likelihood is that life goes on and we all forget about it. So it's, I think we all, we to our country, we owe it to a generation to do this so that even people, even Rwandans who, are born to, who will be born tomorrow will know that this happened and will fight to prevent it from reoccurring. Because we shouldn't forget what happened. People will forgive, people will start all over again to believe in the future as I was saying earlier, but we must never forget. The children must know about it. I'm an educationist, I know the importance of that as well. But also, uh, it's a way of gathering strength to continue. Because it's, sometimes it's easy to forget. Those who haven't been through it, those uh, who were not there, have to be reminded. Well, it's really important because you will help that I will speak to youth. Um, they will never forget, that, or they will get more idea for exactly what happened, such as, um, they get confused a lot by getting people saying different stuff. But for the event to happen every year, it gives the real image for what happened and what they, they should change about it. Basically, is to uh, use this as an example 
whenever uh, such uh, a threat occurs anywhere, uh, Rwanda should be used as an example. Uh, and uh, an example uh, which demands that we should never ever fail any community within Africa. Uh, as members of the diplomatic corps, we will ensure that we remain proactive um, to forestall uh, what we saw in 1994 um, and never again to shock our conscience and the conscience of those that will come after us. Well, constant dialogue and reminder within the diplomatic corps here but also in our dialogue with the American public and the American uh, authorities. Uh, I mean, America is a superpower. They were around when that thing happened. And we have to, we have to remind them that it happened under their watch and that it shouldn't happen again. And then we have to take all measures in terms of education, uh, mobilization, and, and also, uh, you know, be in the right fora to say it. We in, uh, here in Diplomatic Corps, we do uh, interact a great deal with our friends of Rwanda. The ambassador is a very good friend of ours. And uh, even his presence reminds us that something happened in his country that, that, was, that tarnished Africa and the world, and that we should keep the watch and keep talking about it. And, and, and just like it happened in, for another people somewhere else in the world and still around. I mean, think about the Jewish people, for example, and what happened there. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, exchange, talk, make sure the issues are always on the front burner. And, and that's, that's what we should be doing. I think just being an activist, um, you know, as an American, it's embarrassing and kind of shameful how we reacted to it. So just being an activist and if it, you hear anything or you see anything or know anything that's happening to so just really, you know, get your government hard and, you know, activate for it, activate <laughs> and push them to do the right thing. As a younger person, I would help other young person to understand clearly to get the idea for what went wrong. If you look at it, it was lack of knowledge for what happened. So if you try to understand exactly what happened, that will never happen again. Well, you know, I mean, individually there's a lot you can do um, by keeping the stories alive, you know, uh, by, you know, participating and even listening to, to those who um, to have um, you know, suffered losses and so forth. But I, I also think that, you know, for people who are in a position of influence and people who are in a position of power, one of the talks today that resonated with me so much was Chantal Kalisa. And the media is a very, very powerful medium. And um, being able to influence how those stories are told and in her words, how that knowledge is disseminated, I think is hugely important. Because as a small community, you know, we can, you know, we, we understand the nuances, you know, we understand the testimony we understand the context a lot better. The larger community, however, doesn't have the contextual um, framework. They don't have um, an understanding of the country and so forth to be able to appreciate. They have, you know, a few films here and there that are produced by Hollywood to the masses, but I think the, the individual stories and the ability to get those stories on, um, on, on, on media networks and so forth, I think is a huge part of Never Forgetting. It's absolutely to tell our own stories okay. and, uh, you know, let ourselves be the one to tell our own stories. And I feel it's moral obligation. It's a, it's a human being moral obligation to go out there and advocate and tell the stories to stay it alive and then to never be again. First and foremost, to educate people about what happened in Rwanda and to remind people that that could happen anywhere in the world, including the United States. And in the fact, it did happen in the United States with our indigenous populations uh, in the uh, early, early uh, years of, of our history. Uh, secondly, to, to try to help people just to get along and to negotiate conflict rather than to go to some sort of armed conflict. I mean, this has to come through personal deeds 
and uh, commitments and uh, spreading the world, reminding the world about its commitment to tolerance and the uh, communal living without conflicts. Rwanda legacy is universal legacy at this time. It's no longer Rwanda legacy alone. Just like the Holocaust of the Jews, against the Jews, it was a universal event. Uh, the way I have been contributing uh, is to share what I went through, hoping that if people can see the ugliness of genocide through my own experiences, they can see why no one deserves to be to go through what I went through. So speaking, I started public speaking really because it was not a choice, but because I realized that those people who are gone, the one million, are not going to be able to fight for the injustice that they suffered. So I'm here as a voice, I'm, I'm, I'm here to represent someone bigger and greater than myself, and obviously to make sure that, again, the, their legacy, their names, their faces, their dreams go on. I think Never Again is, should be a collective action, and Never Again should not be for Rwandans only, because genocide happens everywhere. It's, there's nothing Rwandan about genocide. Rwand, genocide happen, can, could happen everywhere, and should be prevented everywhere. So to me, I think my role as an individual, my role as a human being is even more important than a Rwandan. But as a Rwandan, I think very important, first of all, to make sure that we teach reconciliation because these things happen in our families, in our conversation we have with friends, in the conversation we have with workmates. So if you can talk about it and make sure that we can discuss the causes and the prevention about conflicts. At, even at a small level, it's very important. And then for Rwandans, I think we need to understand that genocide was not spontaneous. It was taught, it was inculcated in the thinking in churches, in families, in schools. And this has to be undone by going through exactly the same roots and going backwards and trying to teach the anti-genocide message. Talk to your friends, talk to your children about reconciliation, about oneness, about the uniqueness of people does not make them different. It, makes them, it doesn't make them enemies. They can coexist. So I feel as, as a person, I'm completely responsible to make sure that this is something, this is a conversation that happens and between people and between nations because genocide can happen anywhere.